trying to reap the harvest. They could aid in the talents. The fisher's man's kingdom of heaven. Mark on the forehead. Dear friends of the work of God, today I want to share with you God's eagerness for the salvation of mankind in these last times. The Lord has told me that we are living the last moments of life on earth as we know it, for a great purification is coming that has to do with the wickedness of man in these last generations. The cup of the wrath of God is full. Man has been warned in the last centuries that the Lord is coming to execute his justice. But man has not listened to the heavenly messages. The church has lost faith and is in a state of apostasy, heresy, blasphemy, idolatry, profanation, and sacrilege. The moment of the law of the justice of God is near. The angels have already begun to pour out their cups. The pandemic is only one of them, because worse things are coming. The Lord revived the parable of the talents in the following way. I had this dream. I saw that I was in a field on a road near the entrance of a very large farm. I found coins on the ground and began to pick them up. They were full of mud, half buried. I picked up about 50 coins. I understood that they were like the talents of the parable of the Lord. It was time to pick them up to present them to the Lord. At that moment, a rich man appeared who was the owner of the farm. He said to me, let me see what you have found. I gave him all the talents I had collected. When he received them in his hands, they became like a fishing net about 50 centimeters in diameter, but instead of coins, they were like fish, some big, some small. That was the end of the dream. I understood that the Lord comes to reclaim the talents of our life, which in most cases we bury and do not produce acceptable fruit. Our performance before God is mediocre, and we will be judged by the bad use of our talents and abilities. However, I also understood that when the Lord told Peter in Luke 5 verse 10, from now on you will be fisher of men. My talents had caught some fish that represented a certain number of souls. Hopefully, we can live to catch many souls for the Lord. The next night I had this other dream that also has a lot to do with the time of chastisement. Before telling you the dream, I want us to remember how the Lord told Moses to paint the door frames with the blood of the sacrifice. Exodus 12, 22 to 23, then take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood collected in the basin, smear the lintel and the two doorposts with blood, and let none of you go out of your house until morning. When the Lord passes through the land to strike the Egyptians dead, he will see the blood on the lintel and on the doorposts, and he will pass by that house. The Lord will not allow the destroying angel to enter your house and strike you. This ordinance of the Lord refers to the blood of Christ that must anoint us to be preserved from God's punishment. For Jesus says in John 6, verse 64, that whoever eats and drinks of his blood shall have eternal life. There is also a vision of Ezekiel that tells us about the punishment. It tells us about the sign on the forehead, which is the symbol of the cross. 
very contrary to the mark of the beast, the 666. Ezekiel 9, verses 3 to 10. The glory of the God of Israel, which was above the cherubim, rose up and went to the threshold of the temple. The Lord called to the man clothed in linen, who had a scribe's pouch around his waist. And the Lord called him and said to him, Go through the city of Jerusalem and place a sign on the foreheads of those who groan and make lamentation over all the detestable acts that are committed in the city. But I heard him say to the others, Follow him, go through the city, and kill without pity or mercy. Kill, old and young, girls and boys, and women, start at the temple, and leave no one alive, but do not touch those who have the sign. And those men began by killing the old men who were in front of the temple. And he said to them, Go out and defile the temple. Fill the courts with dead bodies. So they went out and began to kill people all over the city. And while they were killing, I was left alone. And I fell on my face to the ground and cried out, O oh Lord and God, will you unleash your fury on Jerusalem and destroy all the rest of Israel? The Lord answered me, The iniquity of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of violence. The city is full of injustice. They think the Lord has forsaken the land. There is no Lord to see. Therefore, I will not show them pity or compassion, but will call them to account for their conduct. Now, in my dream, I found myself in a place where there were many people from all nations. It was like a gigantic pitch. I asked to make a bonfire, to collect ashes to mark the cross on the forehead, as it is done on Ash Wednesday. A bonfire one meter high was made. Then I asked for some wood to be thrown on it, and I said it was from the cross of Christ. Then another scene appeared, in which I was cleaning with water in a rag the frames of a green door. I remembered how in the Old Testament the Israelites marked the door frames with the blood of the sacrifice. Also how when we receive the Holy Ash on Holy Wednesday, we are told the word of Jesus. Repent and believe in the gospel. All this leads me to understand that we are close to the moment of the encounter with the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, let us repent. Let us believe in the gospel. Let us believe in the signs of the times. Let us believe in the visions and dreams, warnings of the Holy Spirit that alert us of the great judgment of God. Let us come out of sin and let us be ready because no one knows the day or the hour. If you like this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, The Work of God, share on social networks, and do not forget to leave your valuable comments. What do you think about your own conversion? God bless you.